I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 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 Uh, standing before you is the child of God. Pastor Shangase. We have been given a task to render the word of God for today. Amen. Amen. We are going to be looking at a title. Removing the blank from the eye. Removing the blank from the eye. We have not exhausted the subject of discernment. But this is another dimension that the Lord saw it fit that we must also cover today by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. We are going to be founded in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, from verses 3 to 5. Matthew chapter 7, verse 3. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Oh, how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite. First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Amen. Kindly give Pastor Mayo the mic so that he may bless the word for us, please. Babeka Menel in a Mandalenko, such as Christ was a Nazareth. Your word, indeed, is the one who spoke, Kulunkulongo, when you renewed the face of the earth. Even Natsige, Kulunkulona Mand and Delene, see Tolilis in Dulis at Hola Mabala, Cosa Macos, Lonak Pelis Vilak. Elizo with Sislanza, Lom Sebenzi, Cosana Manda, Ozanga, Wawanega, Izingelos, Cosia Macos, Ozanga, Wawanega, but Prophet, Kepa, Wati, Wena, Cosiches, Ozo Sanza, Ibandalago, Namanja Gasia, Kelange, Kamagaches, Wutti Father, Mausi Sanze, Kulunkulongole, and Gallo Izulaco, so that on the day of your coming, Kulunkulona Manda, we may be a church, Cosia Macos, that is without spot, without wrinkles, without Anything Kosia Makosi Onga Ibona Izoba Izo disqualifier Kulungulongwele a good salen in Nawe Inguna Pagate Sakala Gongelogo Eka Menelina Mandalenko Su Chesu Christos Nazareth Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the synoptic gospels that we are reading from the book of Matthew. In Jobagasi Funda Gungum Vangel Mateo. It's the seventh chapter. Isatlosis Kombis. It is the sermon of the mouth. This is uh, the fundamental teachings that the Lord gave as he was inaugurating the kingdom of God here on earth. The same passage is covered also in Luke, but it is not given much depth uh, by word count in comparison to what, to what the narrative of Matthew um, gives us. Reason being, Matthew has a different audience. And also Luke has a different audience. Though they are covering the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you look at the book of Matthew, the genealogies, um, Matthew is writing for the purpose of proving that Jesus Christ is the rightful heir of the throne of David. The evidence of that statement is that when you look at the genealogies, 
He starts from Abraham. And then he comes to David. And then he goes down to the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you when you see from David to the Lord, you can come across familiar names there that are found from the book of Chronicles and also from the book of Kings. The Kings that were reigning over the section of Judah. Because we understand that David, when he came to power, uh, he was given to reign after King Saul. And the Lord anointed David while King Saul was still on the throne. The testimony of the Lord about David was that I have found a man after my own heart. So he was anointed by God while Saul was still on the throne. So when he came to power, he reigned in Hebron for seven years. And then for the remainder of the 33 years, 33 years, yes, he reigned in Jerusalem, reigning over the entire nation of Israel. Amen. The 12 tribes. Then after him, it was his son Solomon who was also reigning over the nation of Israel. Jerusalem being the capital city. But Solomon, God gave him grace that he gave him wisdom that no man living in his time and even in the current time ever had. The book of Kings, chapter 4, verse number 29, he speaks about God giving Solomon the largeness of heart and then God filling him up with the wisdom that surpasses the wisdom of Egypt and also the wisdom of the East. So when Solomon came to power, the Lord gave him terms and conditions that one of them was that the king was not supposed to take pagan wives. But Solomon transgressed that commandment of God. And he, he, he had wives from Egypt and also from Moab such that at the latter end of his life he built the, 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 the shrines of the foreign God within the Holy Land. As a result, God charged in such a way that now from his son, Rehoboam, he split the kingdom. The northern kingdom and then the southern kingdom. The southern kingdom comprised of the two nations. The nation of Judah and also the nation of Benjamin. And then the remaining ten was called the northern kingdom. This happened during the time of his son, Rehoboam. All right. So now, when you come and, and study the genealogies in the book of, of Matthew, you will find that you are going to have the lineage of kings from David to Solomon to Rehoboam. And then that lineage is connected with the, 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 the father no Baba. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So you can see that Matthew's purpose was proving that indeed just as the Lord spoke a messianic prophecy to David that he will never cease or fall short 
or somebody to reign in his stead speaking about his throne the throne of the Messiah that it is going to be in the lineage of David forever so Matthew is writing that that king which was promised in the life of David is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so that is Matthew. So he's, he's writing with that purpose in mind. Now when you look at Luke, Luke also gives us genealogies. The genealogy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But he is proving to us that this Jesus is the savior of both the Jews and the Gentiles. Because as he writes, he links him with Adam. Amen. Amen. Because the first man, Adam, sinned because of disobedience. And then the last Adam, which is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he was accepted to God because of obedience. So in Adam, sin came into mankind. But through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, righteousness was restored back to the mortal man. So, when Luke writes, he is giving us hope as the Gentiles because even Luke himself, he is a Gentile. He is proving the Lord that even the Gentiles has a part in the plan of God. Amen. Amen. So now, those are the Gospels and where we are, we are looking at, we are looking at the book of Matthew, chapter number seven. So now the Lord is speaking about, he's doing his sermon, his first address to the multitude. Yes, he is speaking about matters of judgment. Um, if we can read, he says, judge not that you, that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Why do you look at, your, at the speck in your brother's eye? But you do not consider the plank in your own eye. Or oh, how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look a plank is in your own eye. Now, we are going to focus, we are going to work back we are going to focus in verse number five. He says, hypocrite. First, remove the blank from your own eye. Then you will see to remove the speck from your brother's eye. All right. So now, what the Lord is addressing here is the issue of judgment. What he is addressing here, he is addressing vigilance. Um, when the Lord speaks, he is God Almighty. His word, when it is released, it is all encompassing. It has a natural phenomenon or natural effect. But it is ageless in terms of time. So when he speaks from the throne in heaven, his immediate surroundings hear him. The, the angels that are around the throne, they hear his word. The entire heaven hear his word. And then even the second heaven, Umkat, hear his word. And the entire earth hears his word. And even the underworld hears his word. All at once. So now when he speaks, 
he speaks about the natural blank and a speck naturally. But by virtue of his office as God Almighty, what he speaks does not only I have a boundaries in the natural arts only. But it comes out of time. Alright. So we are going to appreciate what I'm saying as we go along. First, let us look at a few definitions. We are going to define three terms. We are going to define the term blank and also the term speck. And lastly, we are going to look at the term hypocrite. Amen. Uh, so when you look at the term blank, as it is used by the original Greek language, this is the term uh, that is called a dorkos. Yes, dorkos, which simply means a stick of a dried timber. All right. So it's just a stick of dried timber. That is what it means. Originally. Now, when you look at the term speck, it is called kaphos in Greek, which is a dry stalk or a twig. So so this is translation yes yes dry twig yes it's kaphos a dry stalk or a twig or just straw amen all right so when you look at the term hypocrite it is the term called hypocritis which simply means Actor Elisho Umzenzis under an assumed character. It means actor under an assumed character. It simply means a pretender. Ogushut Umzenzis, some lingis. I bong in course. Mushu chess. Tell us, Caesar, never would get my belly figure, Timon Lob Tongo. Or if you see your neighbor falling asleep, please wake them up. Amen. Amen. This is just an exercise of love. Love covers the multitude of sins. So, as we see your neighbor falling asleep, please wake them up. We were speaking of money. Everyone would be awake. But because it's the word, everyone is asleep. Amen. So may we please love each other in that way. It would appellant. Yes, it's a very good thing. Yes, it's a very good thing. If your neighbor is falling asleep, please wake them up. Amen. 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 We are looking at these terms. Verse number 5, chapter 7. Verse 5 of chapter 7. The Lord is saying, hypocrite. All right. So he appeals to the nature. He says, hypocrites, first remove the blank from your own eyes. Then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So, he is making a reference Ukuluma. of the nature of a person, the condition of a person Isimo, who is to judge. He says hypocrite. Uti All right, now we said, what is a hypocrite? Yini it's an actor, it's a pretender. Umuntu so, if you look at the term hypocrite, it's a person who goes into a certain role. Like in your stage plays. And, and, even, and even in your films. And, and even in your, and even in your, your, films, even in your drama that we watch day and night. Amen. So those people whom we look at in our favorite television shows, we all know that 
Those are not their real lives. But those are the roles that they sign in and portray for a certain period of time. So they have a role and then at the end of the series they go back to their normal lives. So what you see as they play is not who they are in real life. So it's a role then a person in his real life. So it goes to up to a certain extent that he will be given a name in a certain role which is different to the name that was given to him by his or her parents. So it's a name and a role. An actor under an assumed character. Hypocrite. So now, when the Lord is addressing this issue, this issue he says, hypocrites, first remove the plank from your own eyes. Then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. When you look at the term clearly there, um, this is the term that speaks about penetration. Visionary penetration. Yes. It speaks about the ability to see clearly. Repent. Some are falling asleep. So it's a, clearly it means the penetration of vision. An example. That when you look at my far right, there is a wall there. Because those are leverages, right? So a wall is built so, so for dignity's sake, so that a person who is on the inside uh, and also a person who is on the outside may not be able to see what's going on there. So when I am in this position, my view is obscured by the wall unless I have prophetic eyes. But the natural eye cannot go beyond that obstruction. So, when he says, first remove the plank, then you see clearly. So, when he says clearly, he is speaking about this kind of vision that is clear, that is not obscured. Alright, so now, when you look at the heart of this verse, it's a person, the person who is whom the Lord says hypocrite too. It's a person who has some form of vision. But the vision is not clearly because of the plank that is in his heart. It is a, a, a notion of a person who wants to help. But he wants to help but the prerequisite for him or her to help is sight is vision. Right. So the Lord is saying, let there be order first. Yes, you have good intention to take out the speck from your brother's eye. But you cannot achieve that effectively lest you remove the plank from your very own eye first. Amen. Amen. So now, we do have willing hearts to help. But at times, it happens that you want to help. But you don't have a capacity to help. Amen. 
Amen. So now the Lord is addressing Inkosite. that issue that you are filled with the desire to improve the vision of your brother. But where you are right now, you do not have the capacity to help him. The order of things, first help yourself, then you can help your brother. Amen. Amen. Right. So, hypocrite. So, now, he says, hypocrite. So, it means the entire, uh, the blank is attracted by the nature of the subject to whom the Lord is speaking to. When he comes to his disciples, he says, come, I will make you fishers of men. Alright, he says, come, I will make you fishers of men. So, it's the process of being made and then the execution of duty of fishing. So, it means so in order for the plank to be removed permanently because when you are solving a problem let us make this simple illustration let's go to the kitchen at home let's say there is a problem with your sink no sink. The tap is not working properly and waters, the, the water comes out gushing and then it overflows and then it happens that the stopper is in the sink that's the volume of the sink as the water gets into the sink fills up up to the brim to the point of overflow and then it overflows all the way out of the sink to the point where by the water goes to the floor. So let's say this scenario happens when you are not around in the vicinity of the kitchen. You will discover that you are in another room and then you find water flowing. The first thing that comes into your mind is that where does this water come from? You want to identify the source and then you realize that the, there is a problem with the sink. Alright, so now there are two things that you can do. There is a, a temporary solution and also a permanent solution. The temporary solution will be to take the mob and, and, and begin to deal with the water and mop the floor. But if you are going to mop the floor, you will continue in vain. You will keep on mopping because you will mop but if the tap is not fixed, the water, will, you will mop, it will be dry. And then after some time, the water will come again. But if you are going to incorporate the two solutions, fix the tap first. And then after you fix the tap, then you can attend to the floor and, and begin to mop. Then you have solved the problem of the water inside the house. So now, the blank and the hypocrite. There is a relationship between the blank and the hypocrite. Because the word of God in the book of Job, chapter 14, verse number 4, he speaks about the fact that you cannot... That which is pure cannot come from that which is impure. So there is a relationship between this blank and the state of being a hypocrite. So now if you can deal with the hypocrisy, so it means we can do away with the blank permanently. Because if we attend to the blank only and don't attack the root 
good cause, which is hypocrites. Then we are going to be we are going to be doing the vain job. We will keep on mopping. We will keep on mopping. Every Sunday we will keep on mopping. Every Thursday we will keep on mopping. We'll keep on mopping. Because there is a broken tap. So now. Is cause and effect. Hypocrite. So the Lord is addressing the order of things. Amen. So now the nature of hypocrisy. This is my point. The nature of hypocrisy. Attracts the blank. Unto the eye. So if you get rid of hypocrisy, then the vision will be clear permanently. Amen. Someone uh, prayed a, a prayer of soul ties. We do pray those prayers. You fast for three, three days dry and then you pray with your pastor. And then what happens? People go back to their dating lives. So, we will pray together, breaking soul ties this week. You are saying that and making the prayer, because but yet you now there is this the religious spirit. Yes, it's bambile. We do not want to. We do not want to deal with the problem. It's just saying that I will go to the past. You and then, and so, then go to the so past. It's going to be a cycle of, of, of so working in vain. are things that we have to look into and look at the source. We will not remove so the same So my impulse is to so deal with so hypocrisy first. He's saying, then the blank will go away. So now, is the word of God and our conduct, we are surface orientated. We don't, we don't look at things from their source. Amen. So it means for this to happen, for the blank to be permanently removed, the spirit of hypocrisy must leave the subject. Now, if we go on looking at this principle that the process of becoming is mandatory. Our deliverance is hinged to the process of us changing, becoming, moving away from the state. We move from state to state, from the carnal nature to the divine nature. And then the consequences of the carnal nature will fall off. All right, so it means looking at this subject, I don't want us to divorce it from the subject of discernment. Because in order for us to discern, we have got to see clearly. All right, so it means in order for us to be perfect in our discernment, as the Lord says, that we may be able to see Clearly, to remove the speck in our brother's eye. So it means we have to understand the nature of hypocrisy and the operation of the spirit of hypocrisy. Because we cannot fight the enemy that we do not understand. Amen. So if we are going to go to war, we have to understand and study the enemy well so that we may be able to create a strategy that is going to give us victory at the end. Jericho is shut up because of the children of Israel. The walls. Nobody can come in and go out. So, the Lord reveals this to Joshua. And then he gives him the strategy. 
as to how they can take hold of Jericho. So now, if we are to overcome the spirit of hypocrisy, we need to be informed about how it operates. What are its roots and what are its characteristics? Because the Lord, the word of God says, we shall see them by their fruit. Amen. So the symptoms of hypocrisy must be, yes, must be fully known so that you may be able to confront them. Amen. All right. So we are going to look at um, the Old Testament first. We're going to come back to this passage and then also look at um, the same subject in the apostolic era, the book of Acts. And then we are going to conclude. Now, yes, when yes. you look at this term hypocrisy, searching it from the scriptures, it appears 20 times. Yes, it appears 20 times. And we, it appears first in the book of Job. Uh, chapter 15, verse number 34. We are going 34. to take two passages from Job because... It, it finds uh, occurrence in verse, chapter 15, verse number 34. And 15, also, it also finds occurrence in chapter 36, um, chapter 36, verse 7 to verse number 13. Verse 7, like so, kindly show us Job chapter 15, verse number 34. Job chapter 15, verse 34. Mm -hmm. For the company of hypocrites will be barren, and fire will consume the tents of bribery. All right. They conceive trouble. They conceive trouble and bring forth futility. Their womb prepares deceit. Amen. Can you also give it to us in the King James Version? KJV, the same verse. Job chapter 15, verse 34 in the King James Version. For the congregation of hypocrites shall be desolate and fire shall consume the tabernacles of bribery. Amen. So, for the congregation of hypocrites shall be desolate and fire shall consume the tabernacles of bribery. Attention to the first part of the verse. We are trying to link hypocrisy and his fruit because there are certain tools of studying the word of God one is called the systematic theology whereby the doctrines are grouped together under subtopics uh, where you study about the Lord Jesus Christ about the Holy Spirit so what happens there all the verses that are talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, they are grouped together and they form a teaching. But there is also another tool which is called biblical theology whereby one theme is traced from the beginning and it is followed right through the Bible all the way to the end. So now in this verse, the spirit of the living God uttering through Job, through the book of Job, he says the congregation of hypocrites. So he's speaking about the state. He says if you are in the state of hypocrisy, the end result is desolation. So the fruit of hypocrisy is desolation. So that is the principle that, that we gather from the first mention of this word from the Holy Scriptures. So the Lord is revealing the seed which is hypocrisy and he is also giving us the end result that it is desolation. Alright, so the New King James the term desolation there, it, it says a barrenness. Barrenness. So a desolate land, it's a land that cannot produce vegetation. It's, it's a fruitless land. 
So, right from the start, we can be able to, to, to appreciate this, that this is the device of the enemy. Hypocrisy is the device of the enemy that brings about barrenness at the end. It is, it is a spirit that is counterproductive because the word of God says in the book of Genesis, verse 128, he says, be fruitful and, and multiply and replenish the earth. So the commandment of God is a fruitfulness. But what we see here is the direct opposite, barrenness, desolation. And the cause of that is hypocrisy. So now, the scope of our understanding is now widening. Because we can see that once the spirit enters into the church, once the spirit enters into an individual, it is there to target fruitfulness. So, should there be barrenness, then we can start discerning and be able to that amongst other things that are a problem, hypocrisy is a candidate. So, from this scripture, we are able to appreciate that. All right, so let us look at also uh, the same, in the same book of Job, chapter 36. Uh, verse number, from verse number 7, all the way to verse number 13. Job chapter 36, verse 7. Yes. He does not withdraw his eyes from the righteous, but they are on the throne with kings, for he has seated them forever, and they are exalted. And if they are bound in fetters, held in the cords of affliction, then he tells them their work and their transgressions. Okay, let's, let's build up step by step. Show us verse number 7 first. Okay. He does not withdraw his eyes from the righteous, that is God. But they are, but they are not on the but they are on the throne with kings, for he has seated them forever, and they are exalted. Okay. Verse, next verse, please. Okay. I would like us to pay careful attention from verse number eight. And we are going to Wrap up the point of verse number 13. Now, he says, if they are bound in fetters, held in cords of affliction, who are these? This is, this is God and the people. All right. Now, he is saying, if people are held in fetters, what are fetters? When Paul and Silas were beaten as they were preaching, in Acts chapter 16 from verse number 25, they beat them, they stripped them, and then they beat them, and then they put fetters on them. It's, it's, it's a kind of... Um, it's the same as handcuffs. Uh, handcuffs, yes. So, it's, it's a type of handcuffs. Okay, so, they, and as much as they are physical handcuffs, they are also spiritual handcuffs. That the enemy uses to keep us bound. Alright, so now, now, the Lord is saying there, if his people are held bound in fetters, meaning if there is any limitation in your life, meaning if there is any form of... Um, Stagnation. It might be one a type of a fetter from the enemy. It might be a type of a limitation from the enemy. Okay. So if they are bound in fetters and held in the parts of affliction. All right. So what does he say? Verse number nine. Then he tells them their work and their transgressions. That they have acted defiantly. There are some of the things that come into our lives because of our disobedience. When we open up gates and break, and break spiritual laws, then we open ourselves to the enemy. He is able to handcuff us and keep us bound. So now, what is revealed here is the corrective measure by God out of his love that if you are bound in certain areas of your life because of transgression, 
the Lord will tell you your works before he reveals somebody else's works before he reveals somebody else's faults he will highlight your works first he says he tells them their work and their transgression that they have acted defiantly now transgression this is an act of trespass now, when you enter a private property, that, yes, where there is a fence, there is a board that is normally hanged there. That says it's a private property. Trespassers would be prosecuted. So, transgression it is to transgress the law of God. manifestation of sin and iniquity. So, when the book of Isaiah speaks about the work of the Lord, he says he was bruised of our iniquities. He was pierced for our transgressions. A bruise you cannot... There is no blood that comes out, but it clots on the inside. But if you are pierced, that, that causes the blood to come out. So the difference between iniquity and transgression is that transgression is the fruit of iniquity. Yes, under the power of sin. So now, the Lord is saying then that if you are bound by fetters and affliction, what does he say? He tells them their work and their transgression that they have acted defiantly. That's That's the the he also opened their ears to instruction and commands that they turn from where? Yes, iniquity, not transgression. Because you see the mind of God. He is, the transgression is the fruit. But the root is iniquity. He says, he also opens their ears to instruction. And command that they turn from iniquity. So, if, if you want to change, the effect. Deal with the cause. Because what we do, we nourish the cause and curse the effect. And then we keep on repeating the same thing. We say we don't want this kind of a state. But we keep perpetuating the same seed. We keep entertaining the same seed. We don't deal with it from the base. When the Lord was moving in the house of Abraham, he says he cast out the slave and his son. Alright. He did not say, Agahambu Ishmael, Pelak He did not say, Chase away Ishmael alone. Hagar must stay behind. Abraham no because Abraham and Hagar know so each other in if, Egypt. If, 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 if Ishmael goes, um, Ishmael there might be a possibility of another son. If Hagar remains, because um, Hagar the source of Ishmael is Hagar. So, um, Hagar. It's, a, it's a, the slave. Iskila. And also, his son. So, the root. So, the root is iniquity. And the fruit is what? Transgression. Now, he opens their ears to instruction. So, deliverance in every part of our lives will come by instruction. The instruction that delivers is packaged in the written word of God. The instruction that delivers um, is orated by the mouthpieces of God. The instruction that delivers um, um, is spoken of by God, even by circumstances. 
In the church of Antioch, there were teachers and prophets. This is the time for the rise of those two ministries. Because what we are fighting against is what the Lord spoke through the Apostle Paul. He says in the latter days, people shall take heed of deceiving spirits and also doctrines of devils. So the teachers, there's got to be a rise of the truth teaching of the word of God to counteract the false doctrines of the enemy. There is got to be a rise of the apostolic or of the prophetic to counteract the spirit that drives false doctrines. Because the ambience of Antioch it was a breeding, it was a, 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 a port for the launching of this a ministry's person of God says there were two there were prophets and teachers. So now, if the atmosphere of Antioch is not simulated in the current church, we run the risk of producing false teachers and false prophets. Just as it is also happening now in the body of Christ because there is the absence of the life of consecration in the life of ministers. The word of God says after they have ministered unto God through prayer and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, separate me Paul and Barnabas um, for the work that I have anointed for them. So now, the spirit of the living God um, will not be able to speak if you have not taken an initiative um, to um, live a consecrated um, life. Um, so now, we are going to run with the gifts and then leave the word of the spirit behind. And if we run with the gifts, we run the risk of speaking from our own mind. We run the risk of speaking from our own understanding. And that's where the, the breed of false teachers come. That's where the breed of false prophets come. So now, the, the issue is consecration for the launching of the tomb. Now, so these two has to rise so that the membrane and so that the, 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 the layer of resistance that is counteracting the word of God because the word of God is taught but it finds a resistance massive resistance from prior knowledge and even the things that are taught by the enemy. So if we are to succeed in bringing about discipleship, we have got to rise to a, a, a point where we are going to confront these spirits and take them out of the mind of the church. Then the word of God, the mouth of God, as it speaks, the word may be able to reach the heart of the church. Now, hypocrisy is one of them. Hypocrisy is one member amongst many that forms an army of resistance against the entrance of the word of God in the heart of the church. Right. Now, he also opens their ears to instruction and commands that they turn from iniquity. Yes, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. All right. So now, the Lord is saying, if his people are bound, he shows the error, and then he prompts repentance. Now, if is a condition, a condition, that what follows after if, this will hold true provided that, that the condition is met. What's the condition? The condition is obedience. Um, if they um, obey, um, that's the condition. Then, what is the promise, the outcome? Um, it is prosperity. Um, so now, 
When God shows you that stop gossiping and then you listen, that's obedience. Then the end result is that you are going to see progress in different areas of your life. So it's an equation. So it's him telling you your works, evil works, and him opening you up for correction. And if you obey, then the fruit is prosperity. And he says, and they and and they shall spend their days in pleasure. So it means there are certain things, there are certain calamities that come to our lives. Not because it is a package that you are sent to, to, to purify us as sons, but we fall unto those things because of our own disobedience. All right. Next verse, please. Okay, verse 11. Verse 11. But if they do not obey, that's the second leg now. So it means when God speaks, you have an option. It's either you close your ears or you open your ears and don't do what God says. Or that, so this is now the second leg of disobedience. But if they do not obey, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. So it means the consequence of disobedience is death without knowledge. All right. So now we are going to arrive at this verse, verse number 13. All right. Now, as he closed this loop, he says, but the hypocrites in heart store up wrath. They do not cry for help when he binds them. All right. So, Hypocrisy here is the hypocrisy in heart. Because remember, guard your heart above everything else. For all issues of life emanate from it. So now, when hypocrisy is in the heart, it stores up wrath. Now, this is the wrath of God. So it means from God, the God head. We are able to draw mercy from him. We are all able to draw grace from him. And at, at the same time, if we fall into sin, as of the sin of hypocrisy, we also draw wrath from him. So the word says, is but the hypocrisy in heart stores up wrath. So, hypocrisy, the spirit of hypocrisy, it houses, it invites the wrath of God wherever it is pampered. Wherever it is incubated, it attracts the wrath of God. Amen. So, the sun is sunny outside. If you are wearing a jacket like this one that I'm wearing, and somebody is wearing a white um, apparel, dark clothes, they absorb the sunlight. Yes, and hence the heat more. In, in comparison to white raiment. So now, if our hearts um, it is yours, eh, are bearing hypocrisy, we are like a person Ozenzisa. who is wearing a black jersey in a sunny day, who is inviting the heat of the sun unto himself. But if we read ourselves of hypocrisy, though the sun is not changing in its position, and take on the white 
to raiment. We are not going to feel the heat of the sun. So what the heat of the sun is, is what the wrath of God is, and what the black clothing apparel is, is what the spirit of hypocrisy is into the heart. All right. So, that is how the spirit of hypocrisy is revealed in the Old Testament. The root and the fruit. So when it comes in, it will become a seat in hell. It will become a seat in hell. It books you a seat in hell. So if you are bearing and, and feeding the spirit, you are buying you a seat and you are also reserving for yourself the wrath of God. All right. So, that is how it is revealed from the Old Testament. Old Testament. Now, when the Lord ministers in the book of Matthew chapter 23, there are so many instances where the spirit of hypocrisy is mentioned. But for the interest of time, we are going to look at Matthew chapter 23 because the Lord places a thorough emphasis on hypocrisy in that chapter. There are seven words that he pronounces against hypocrisy. We are going to start. Now, our thinking, we are moving from the Old Testament and we are, we are following this thread in the New Testament and then we are going to close by the apostolic era in the book of Acts. So now, he says, can you read for us, for us from verse number 13? Verse 13. Yes. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men for you neither go in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Amen. So now, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites. Now, who are the scribes? These were religious clerks that were skilled in reading and also writing in letters of the law of God to such an extent that during this era they were consulted even when controversies regarding the law of God arises within the nation of Israel. So though the intention was good but the law, Apostle Paul says the law is spiritual. Now, these, yes, they had cognitive abilities by mind, intellect. So they fell into the, the trap of interpreting the law by the power of reasoning, the mind. And then errors came in. So, and the word of God says, knowledge puffs up but love covers the multitude of sins. So, the Lord is speaking against, harshly against this group, the scribes and the Pharisees, because they went hand in hand. And the sect of the Pharisees, they are the group that, that believes yes, they believe in the resurrection and they also believe in spirits, the existence of spirits, both good and bad. And they were also a sect that upheld the law immensely. We see the teacher who is mentioned by name who rose higher in the sect by the name of Gamaliel in the book of Acts under whom Apostle Paul was raised. So they belong to the sect of the Pharisees. So the Pharisees really are the ones who so are knowledgeable in the law. These are the ones who are knowledgeable in the law. These people. So these were the custodians of the law. They were the, they were, they heard the law and they were esteemed as people who can interpret the law for the layman. So, so, by virtue of that position, because now, 
This is the predicament. The law came through Moses. And Moses was chosen by God as his prophet who spoke with God face to face. Now, the law was received not on earth. Yes, it was not received on the plane. But the Lord called Moses to come to the mountain. And then he did not specify the period of time that he was going to remain upon but the mountain. But he remained there 40 days and 40 nights. And then he came down with the tablets of stone that were written by the finger of God. So the Lord um, teto. Was, was given in the, in, the, in the glory of God. And it came down through Moses. And it was given to the people. Who never went up to the mountain. So a medium. Moses had to teach the law. Through the spirit of God. Because even... The segment of the construction of the tabernacle. The Lord had to put the spirit of God in Bezalel. And then the pattern was in Moses. So if Bezalel could be given the, the plan of the tabernacle. Without the spirit of God. He will not be able to put it together. So. What are we learning here? The spirit that downloaded the pattern to Moses is the same spirit that is able to give insight and ability to reproduce the things that are taught in the spirit Now, let's go back to the scribes and the Pharisees. Now, this they interpreted the law without the spirit of God. They interpreted the law without knowing the origin of the law. They were not acquainted with the environment where the inspiration of the law was. We are facing the same gap. In the church currently, the Lord has taken his servant whom he has given a custodian over this house. He gives him the pattern of the house. And because we are not acquainted with the spirit that is in him, there is an antagonistic move between what he understands between, between what, what the Lord wants to see done and what we are doing. Others pretend as if they understand. But they don't understand. Through the spirit of hypocrisy. It's the same spirit. Remember the hypocrite. He's a pretender. He's an actor who assumes the role. These, they assumed the role of understanding the law without the spirit. So they were liars in essence. So the Lord is uttering warnings, stern warnings, seven of them. He says, woe to you scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites. hypocrites. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourself, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Remember, Kumbula. we want to uncover the operation of the spirit of hypocrisy. Si the the this is one of them. Once the spirit of hypocrisy operates, there is an evangelical hindrance. Souls are not able to come in where the spirit operates. Because this spirit pushes us at the interface where, people, where the souls are supposed to come in. And then when the people are coming in, they don't interface with the truth. They bump with the fake. They bump with... Uh, 
the twisted version of the ba, truth. Ba, 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 ba ne, 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 Through the spirit. Because this spirit moya, is the spirit of stagnation. Moya woku in growth. Because if it is present, there is no growth. And if you are not growing, you become a stumbling block unto those who are younger than you, spiritually speaking. So you stand at the door and so, and as, a, as we are standing at the door, we are blocking others from coming in to the kingdom. And it's also, it also translates into the waste of resources. Because in order for, for a decision to be made, we must be able to gather the truth about the matter. If you don't come out clean about what is it that is... Um, that is your sickness. And you pretend you take the role of that you take the role um, of projecting yourself as if you are well, whereas you are sick. You waste time. Because you will be in that condition for a prolonged period of time because a diagnosis or rather a treatment cannot be issued because, because the true sickness is not known. It is blocked by the spirit. Right. So in that way, time is lost. Resources are lost. And then the light of the truth is blocked. The people who are coming in for the first time are not able to see who the Lord is. Because this spirit becomes the veil to the infants. It hinders growth. All right. Second one. Uh, verse number 14. Kindly show us in easy English. 2314. I love this it version. It helps especially so, to us who went to. Uh, yes. God asks many people to come under his rule, but he only chooses a few. Uh, uh. So let's move back to the same, the other version. All right. This is very taller as we go along. Utige, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses for, for a pretense. Make long prayers. Therefore, you will receive a greater condemnation. So now, <clears throat> now, he is moving on to religious robbery. Yes. The fact that this, this spirit is the same spirit that false ministers use to milk God's people of their money and their resources. Because there are two, there are two he speaks about widows, those who are helpless. And by these groups, the Pharisees and the scribes, by virtue of their position in society, they impose their authority and then twist the will of the helpless up to the point up to the point of robbing them of their supplies materially. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows, houses, and for, for pretense. Make long prayers. Therefore, you will receive a greater condemnation. All right. So this is the second woe. He is saying the fruit of your labor would be you are receiving greater condemnation. Amen. All right. So the next one is verse number 15. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you travel land and sea to win one proselyte, and when he is one, you make him twice as much a son of hell 
as yourselves. All right. So now this spirit, if it is given chance to grow, it, 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 it interferes with the process of discipleship. Woe to scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you travel land and sea to win one proselyte. What is a proselyte? Um, these are the times of Judaism. Uh, the law was given to the Jews. There were people back then who converted to Judaism. Though they were not native Jews, these people were called proselytes. The people who loved the God of Israel and submitted themselves unto the law. Yes, they were called proselytes. So now, the Lord, when he addresses now the um, scribes okay. and the Pharisees, he says, you travel, see, land and sea to win one proselyte. And when he is warned, you make him twice as much as hell, a son of hell as yourself. So it means we can go out and evangelize. But if we still bear the spirit of hypocrisy, um, our our fruit or our labor would be in vain. Because we, pro, we will be producing after our own kind. It's a spiritual law. Because he says this group, they go out and then tell people about the law up to the point of converting them. But look at the product that is made. He says only when he is one. You make him twice as much the son of hell as yourself. So it means when the spirit is, 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 is in operation, it has the ability of producing after its own. It has the ability to move from one generation to the next. Because when the Lord wanted to populate the earth with the truth, he used the tool of discipleship. In Matthew 28, he says, Go ye and make disciples of all nations. Right. Because he modeled the same principle. He took the multitude, and then out of the multitude, he took the seventy. And then out of the seventy, he chose the twelve. He taught them, and then he, he gave them a a, a, an instruction to wait in Jerusalem. So that they may be filled by the Holy Spirit. And then he, com he commanded them to go out and do the same. So, so it means, so if the spirit um, is not dealt with um, up to the point whereby we go out, um, if we go out bearing this spirit, um, we are going to produce the sons that, that are also of the same spirit. If our spirit DNA um, has hypocrisy. We can go out and win souls. We can sit them down and teach them. But we are going to relate the same spirit unto them. Now, look at the danger that when a spirit moves from father to son, it increases in influence and power. He says, you make them the son of hell twice as much the son of hell as you are. So it means that things that are tolerated in this generation, if, if they pass to the second, to the next generation, they are going to cascade in power. It's a known principle. So, it means, if one thing to generation, is tolerated in one generation, then in the next generation, it, 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 it gets new hearts. All right. So, it means, this is the danger of the spirit. It is able to make disciples of itself. It is able to produce and breed its own 
abafundi baso. Amen. How so? Kanjani. By speech, spirits are spread by speaking. Ngokuluma imoya ilunisela ngokuluma. It's a comment under hypocrisy. Umbono ngapanzo umoya ulalela lo mbono noma leo kuluma. The same seed is planted in you. Leo mbewi achalwa gwen. Then as you meditate on that seed, it grows and then you are going to do the same. Then before you know it, there will be a clan the twelve of hypocrisy through the word of mouth. The greatest force for advertising is the word of mouth. The advertising is a word of mouth. Yes, if you receive to save is for a particular business. You recommend it to somebody. This is our greatest challenge as black people in business. Because if someone is coming to buy from it, it's as if yeah, they're begging well, something from see, you. See, see, as, as, as we don't have yeah, well, this thing of no customer care. As, as, yes, as, as employees as well. You, you yeah, well. find that so, someone is as working, as but it's on their phone. Routine. We don't understand that. In a business, you have if to have one, that one customer. customer if you treat that customer well, wherever he goes, he will speak and say that Yes. Also, uh, figure Ash or Gutim. You will speak and say, "Till and gain, then that we need till." This, the certain service I received from this, the way to spread this. Galileo, in that manner, he lasts a sabala la corn. It's the same principle. Usa chama se bedisa. That the devil uses to advance lama spirit within the house of God. Ugozi a sabala la selo mo ya endi la kulukulu. Someone speaks. One agent speaks. And then you need sixty minutes from Vodacom that we used to gossip with. Gubo gubo guti ge says ya kuluma ngalese zito. And then we speak of these things. Joba sends and shall. It now then it passes on to the next person. Then it passes on to the next person. It then it passes on to the next person. And then you will find it being so, filled in the whole church. And then the spirit, I'm a spirit I have this. Then you are going to be told that teach, teach hypocrites. That's why we, we find false teachings and so, teachers of hypocrites. Yes, so now, moving on, so it is able to produce of its own kind. We are quite okay. And it interferes with the making of the right, the correct disciples of the Lord. Okay, all right, now, Verse 10 uh, kindly show us the same chapter. Matthew 23, 23. Next point. Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. Thank you. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Mm. For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, mm. justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Amen. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithes of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. So now, this spirit of hypocrisy, it brings, it works along with the spirit of mediocrity, being average. Yes, of, of doing something half, and, and, and being half, a half measure. And failure to, to be able to ascertain important things. Let's make this example. During the day, there is something that is called a 90-10 rule. Or 80-20 There are some of the activities of your day that controls the entire the entire outcome of the day. The small amount of activities uh, that controls the larger amount of the outcome at the end. If usually, like if 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 there is an idea or an insight that the Lord brings in the ministry that I serve under pertaining the church, I cannot just go and jump. 
and implement it without consulting and then when he gives me approval then I can go ahead because he is the one who is holding, holding accountability over the house the rest custody okay. so, even if we have planned to go out in the outreach, so he has to know who is as to where we are going, when to are we coming back, who is going, and how are we getting there? And what are we and going then to do there? And he's also has to make approval. And he also has to approve the time Saturday that we're going. And he has to so approve that we, we have to serve on a Saturday because Saturday we have to come back. That means usually. Because we are seven during the week. My communication with Baba Sophia, he knows Baba, my life. Five minutes. I, I usually say, do you have five minutes, Pastor? Yes. So that five minutes, Gulo, if, five minutes. If, if, if I bring my proposal he will to listen. him, and then, and then he will say, should I go ahead or stop? So it means, oh, how long? The entire journey that we are planning with the ministry, the ministry. Five minutes. if I cannot get a hold of him, that means it has and to be put on hold. And then he will give me so those means, few minutes. My communication with him, it's those small things that determine the, 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 the entire yes. end. So now let's put it in figure. It makes you not to be able to spot those things as to what are the important things that must be prioritized. It makes you for you to be able the plan to see that is in you. It, it, it makes for them to be the, the, the one thing that the things that you're supposed to be prioritizing, they take a back seat, and then the things then that are less important to so you prioritize because so of the presence of the Spirit. So, la gubo guti. The, the word, is the word is matters. speaking. Uh, 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 is the you are able to the do this. That seem to be because good in the sight the of men. The spirit seeks honor from men. Yes, it seeks honor from men rather than honor from God. So, tithing and even unto Amos but neglecting the weighter matters of the Lord. Mercy, faith, and justice. So, if it is pleasant, average in that sense, you are not able to defend the things that are important. You become average. Next verse, 2325. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. All right. So this one, the presence of the Spirit, it develops a resistance to sanctification. And it prioritizes appearance. Because the Pharisees, they wore a, a, a distinctive apparel that is different that makes them to be different from others. Religious apparel. So that when you behold by the eye, you will vow and say, this is the holy man of God. But on the inside, it's dirt. So, when it is present, it has a tendency to come against the spirit of true sanctification. All right. So, if it is not uprooted, it causes about marked growth. It causes about marked delay in growth in sanctification. All right, because sanctification comes by the word. Of course, they sanctify them by the truth. 
is so the word has to come on the inside and to work on the inside and then the result shows on the outside so when the spirit comes it comes around the entrance of the heart and blocks the word from coming so that you would be engaged in and entertain what happens on the external while you are rotting and dying on the inside. Next point, second to last, 23, 27. Blind Pharisees, sorry, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. All right. So when it is present, Uma ukona, it steals revelation. <laughs> the spirit of revelation Umoya that, that imparts the life of Christ. Lo o leta impilo ka Christ. When the Apostle Paul speaks about his experience, Uma ge Apostle Paul e kunu manga tina. He says this gospel that I preach. Uti leli vangele ge shuma elai. I was not taught by men. Angel fundi swanga man. But I received it by a revelation. Kote ngam galamuk elange sambu. So if the gospel Uma evangele that we are preaching was received by a revelation. Salamuk elange sambu. So the same spirit of revelation must be resident in us. In order. For this word will be able to be housed in us and begin to work. So the spirit of hypocrisy shuts the revelation of the word of God because it is there to steal life. For you are like whitewashed tombs which indeed appears beautiful outwardly but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. So, Deadness inside is a symbol of the lack of the light of revelation. Because the word of God says in the book of John, the enemy, the thief, comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. But I have come so that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So in that verse, uh, death, the mandate of the enemy, Stealing, killing, and destruction um, is packaged in one uh, narration. Because that, he says the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And then says, I have come so that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So it's stealing, killing, and destruction. Then, when the Lord comes, how does he come? He comes by revelation. So he comes by revelation. He imparts life by revelation. So the spirit of hypocrisy sits at the interface where the spirit of revelation is supposed to be. So you can, we, can, we, are, we are still going to look at Apostle Paul as we, as we, as we wrap up. Because those of the law. They had the law. But they did not have the revelation of Jesus Christ. Because they were propelled by this spirit which works hand in hand with the spirit of self-righteousness. So, in the interface where the spirit of revelation is supposed to operate and sit, hypocrisy occupies that space. There is a law in the spirit of substitution. Yes, substitution. Because that is how we were saved. The Lord died a vicarious death. Yes, he took our place. So substitution in the spirit works immensely. So hypocrisy when it, when it comes. In your heart, you sit and occupy the volume of the spirit of revelation. Let's turn to my manager and say, I have a picture a of a satellite dish. But if you have a satellite dish, you are, a satellite dish, you you are able to tap at a satellite dish, you are, you are able to have access to many channels. Yes, but now picture. Picture. 
kama antennas we used to have antenna aerials and way back. they used but to bring poor signal improve. as the technology was improving then so the quality of the picture improved even the quality of the of the picture so on screen was improving you install the satellite dish in so your that home you may tap into our frequencies that are already broadcasted and then you are able to take them into your home and then at the end of the day you will see the receiver and then and then how to get them through this receiver through the screen of your television set the cables and get TV so it's a bit of revelation see and jalo umoya kwakambula na ukanjalo ya wonke ngamanje La Pambin in front as they are as 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 be mile ngaphambi na abanye bakhona enkonzweni as they are standing we are hearing at different frequencies some are hearing as what what the Lord is speaking now ukhuluma izofanayo abanye balezwa some people depending our hearing levels are not the same it depends on where you are it makes you to be able to take heed of what the spirit of the Lord is saying when Moses is in the Red Sea Israel when he was with them they see the Red Sea and they can even hear the, the, the chariots of but Pharaoh, but there's something that they could not hear, hear, which is the word of God. What does God say? When they were crying to Moses, they say, were there not graves for us to bury us in Egypt? God is saying, the Egyptians, the the Egyptians that you see today, you see them no more. You tell Israel to stand still. Now, what's happening? Now, What's happening? Israel. Israel. In the place that they were in, in the place in the place that they were in, in the in the place that they were in, they were surrounded by mountains. And then in front of them was the Red Sea. And then they were pursued by the enemy. And then behind them, so it's right here, but they were born naturally. But they were born in the place that they were in. They saw death coming. And to then, them and then the, the so sea in front of them but they did not have the word so of God Israel and Moses were in the same place but because of the spiritual of he was able to hear as to what God was going to do so it means in order to avoid disappointment we have to walk in the spirit of revelation as to know what God is going to do as to where we are going and how long is going to take us to get there revelation so because the time that we are in we are we, we are going to feed by the spirit the even the economic status of the kingdom of God is going to, is going to be better as a function of us walking in the revelation the spirit of revelation i'm jumping ahead of myself uh, because through it is sentiment we are able to to gauge even our seasons because there are seasons for ministry there are seasons also for businesses all right so if if we have the revelation of god uma sine uma sine sambulo kuna difference between our professions are two kuna kuna mashuko between two professions the accounting was on correct about kona i'm not an expert but it's an example in my hands ukuthi ama accountant they deal about isinto ama records ukuthi kwenza kala ama transactions they take records of what has occurred ebeseke bayabika ngalo another profession ebizwa nge actuarial science ebese kuba khona ke ama actuaries yes ama actuaries they are given tisha ati grace they are given ukufundiswa uku statistics ukuthi they are taught statistically they look into the future bona bapheka currently uma ngabe kuka nje ukuthi uma situation is like this kuzoba kanje ukwesimali even am policies that employed by am insurance they, companies is catch sneak so why am i counting the total companies that which was galeni laba babuka ukuthi in the future kuzobenza kala babuka ngoke muva laba bekisa and then they are able to inform the organization they they hire both am am organizations am actuaries they they hire both of the actuaries and cas for them to be able to survive now my actuaries if you look at actuaries inkulu kakhulu okungena khona because badinga they need to be highly 
educated um, ability because they, they need to be able so to predict. Now, now in the church, look at the wisdom of God. In Egypt, Joseph was a type of an actuary. Because he was able to tell. He was 14 years. He was 14 years. It hadn't happened. But it was a revelation. As to where the earth was moving to. And then, lo, 14 years, lo. These 14 years are coming. And what's going to happen? There will be a year, year of plenty and a year of famine. It did not end there. After receiving and that then knowledge, he was able to give counsel to the father that let us store a fifth of the grain so that we do not find ourselves in a problem. He was to tap into the future and be able to receive knowledge and then that knowledge was used to prepare for the future. Now, what the future of Revelation is, it makes us be able to hear God Yes, but to not be confused with the world as to hear what God is saying now with what has happened and what is going on with the sea in front of us is what's starting to move. Inside, you are full of dead men. So you are full of dead men. And you are full of dead men. 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 You are full of So this is the sign, the sixth sign, the last one. Okay, now. It says, Lord, you like when I see Matthew chapter 23, verse number 29. Uti, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the monuments of the righteous. It's the same connotation as the previous one. Yes, Alain. Um, the spirit, it shuts the prophetic voice. It kills and it suppresses the ministry of prophets. We hold over the prophetic office. Holy Spirit testifies with the Acts chapter 7. You killed the prophets. You killed the prophets. Yeah, but, so he's speaking about the same group, the Zenith group. Yeah, those who knew the Lord, the so, ones that were stoning him, the characteristics, the characteristics of the spirit is these the seven. Amen. Someone is asking, what should we do then? Amen. What should we do the then? Question. Say so we have spotted how we now we note the spirit. We are going to go back to the command of the Lord. He said, Remove the blank from your own eye. Then now we are going to see the whole part. How do, we, how do we come out of this? Because we have built this layer by layer. Now, the removal of the plank, we have because, to deal with zenzis. Yes, because a plank is attracted by the state of hypocrisy. So if we come out of hypocrisy, then the plank would be removed permanently from us. Okay. All right, so as we wrap up, we are going to look at the life of Apostle Paul. This is Paul. Briefly. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 9. Um, yes, Acts chapter 9, from oh, verse number 18. Acts chapter 9, verse 18. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. Amen. What's happening here? We are looking at the conversion of Apostle Paul. So he was on the road to Damascus. And then he meets the Lord. Uh, the bright light shone around him. And he fell down. And then... He said, who are you, Lord? And then the Lord spoke and said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. All 
All right, and then the Lord began to lead him, showing him, him, showing him a place where he has to lodge. Uh, and then for three days and three nights, he was there praying. So while the Lord was blinding, he, while he blinded him, and him praying three days and three nights, at the same time the Lord spoke to Ananias. Ananias. Ananias happened to be Ananias. a disciple who was stationed in Damascus. Church history says he was a bishop of the churches Yena. around Damascus. So he was an elder Damascus. in Damascus. So we see the reaction of Ananias. Um, so that we may be able to get a clear understanding. Let us go back to verses up. We are going to see the conversation between the Lord and Ananias. He says, for I will show him. Yes, verse 13. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard many, I have heard many about this man. How much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. All right, verse 14. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, go for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. May you please take note. See, he is a man Nangumutu. who is trusted Otenjiwe. as the disciple uh, in Damascus. And the Lord is speaking to the servant Paul. who he knew in the eternity but past. A man in flesh. He is now Looking at Apostle Paul from a natural standpoint, he is looking at Apostle Paul based on what he currently does. He is looking at Apostle Paul based on his current state that he is persecuting the church. So we see Ananias. Um, Failing to see things as they are. So, the perception of Ananias is a type of a blank in the eye. Because he, was, he failed to look at Apostle Paul as he was. He did not have the perspective of God, the eternal perspective of God. Of who Paul was. But when the Lord... He says, but the Lord said to him, go. For he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before kings. Before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. So the Lord, Inkosi. based on where he is, <inaudible> he is seen from eternity. <inaudible> but Ananias on the other side, <inaudible> he is seen from the flesh. <inaudible> so, there was a blank in the eye of Ananias that caused him to fail to see clearly the state of his brother. From where Ananias was, his concerns um, about the next man, about Paul, to him, they sounded as if they are great. But at the, at, at, at the interface where the Lord was, the Lord had a greater picture. So the ratio of the, of the plank and the speck. So Ananias thought he was seeing the correct way. But the Lord revealed to him that he was not seeing the entire picture. So when the Lord says hypocrite, hypocrisy can grow and be able to be present even up to the matured stages of our lives. Because if we see by the history of a person, if we do not have the eternal perspective of God, 
we might be robbed of the next apostle Paul. If we look through the eyes of the mistakes of the people, we might be able to, we, we might run the risk of failing to recognize the vessels whom God has chosen. The speck and the plank. Now, it's a bit of a paradox because the Lord, both of these, the, both these persons, Ananias, and also Apostle Paul. Both of them could not see clearly. Ananias could not recognize who Paul was. At the other side, Apostle Paul could not recognize who the Lord Jesus Christ is in the church. But the Lord was at an elevated space. He was able to see that both these are blind. Ananias was blinded by the fact that he is the minister. And then this one on the other side, he was blinded by the hypocrisy that comes by the knowledge of the Lord. But the Lord was sitting at an elevated place. He was able to see the full picture. And then he relayed the word unto Ananias. And said, Ananias, this is my chosen vessel. Go to him and place your hand. For I have commissioned him. Let's look at the next verse. Yes. For, he, for I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered the house and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So now Ananias is saying to, 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 to Saul, Saul, he said, Brother Saul, now what is happening here? Uh, the speech of the Lord, the word of God to Ananias, removed the, the, plank, the plank, removed the plank, and he was able to see clearly. And then we see him now in action, going to his brother, removing the speck that was in him, so that he was able to see clearly. Because the word of God says, brother saw the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So now he lays his hand. Um, and then, verse number 18, immediately fell from his eyes something like scales, and he, received, and he receives his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. So we see the eyes of Saul opening up, the scales falling off as Ananias was placed in his head. So the speck in his eyes was removed. But before Ananias could lay his hand unto Apostle Paul, he had to converse with the Lord first so that he may be able to agree with the eternal perspective regarding Apostle Paul. Then he could lay the hand and then the eyes of Apostle Paul would be opened. This is the interpretation of the same principle in the apostolic era because we have looked at it in the Old Testament. The Lord it, and it was applied in the life of the apostles. That you don't have to let your first help yourself. You first remove the plank so that, yes, so that you may be able to see clearly and remove the moat that is in your brother's eye. So you asked what must we do? Come to the Lord. Revelation 3, verse number 15. To verse number 18 is our last verse. verse. 18. Revelation chapter 3, verse 15. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich, 
and white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and, the, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. Salvation is of the Lord. And in order for us to be able to move out unto the space of utter darkness because of the blinding of hypocrisy. We have to come to the Lord. Ananias on his own could miss Paul and fail to recognize the investment of God that was in the life of Apostle Paul. Lest the Lord spoke to him. On the other side, Saul would continue to persecute the church. Would continue to walk in the righteousness of the law. Lest the Lord made an encounter with him. So both these groups, salvation they received from the Lord. He's saying here, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire because the problem that we have as the church we are unable to gauge our true state we cannot discern where we are we think we see but we are blind but the Lord is saying let us come to him and he is going to help us with our spiritual blindness our mandate to the body of Christ and also the world is to open is to open the eyes of the blind outside but we cannot open the eyes of the blind if we ourselves are still blind so just as Ananias we have to converse with the Lord so that we may be able to see value according to the value system of God in the world because Pauls are still on the outside. But we are the type of Ananias. The anointed verses of God on the outside. That, is, that, has still, that must still come into the house of God. Whose eyes must still be open. But if we are bound by hypocrisy, we are neither going out to flesh the souls. We are stagnant. We cannot even see the value according to the system of God. What we need is to come to the Lord. He says, um, that our nakedness may not be revealed. He says, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. Eye salve is a substance you know? that is possessed by the Lord. You can only receive it as we come to him. If we come to him, he will give us this eye self which is going to cause our eyes to be open and be able to view ourselves as we are and to view our brothers as we are. Amen. Amen. So the invitation in the house goes out to everyone who says, I want to discern accurately and I see that I have had error. I magnified the mistakes of others. I forgot that I myself need help. When you are praying, Mistake, uh, a mistake, someone else's mistake no, will first come to you even when the word comes. It's the exact same thing that the makes you say it would have been better if someone was here when this was spoken. You are redirecting the word from yourself and you're taking it to someone else. You do not receive it yourself for you to be able to receive help. Therefore, I ask that we come before the Lord. It's a spiritual sickness. But but the Lord says he has a cure. He speaks of the eyes of He's saying, and you cannot get it from Paul. You cannot get it from Ananias. But both of them were blind. But it was the Lord who spoke. And both of their eyes were open. But let us come to him. 
Mele he's the one with the eye salve for, for it to help us for that we may be able to see in a clear manner if you are saying that please we stand and come in the front and we will pray together as the Lord will help us with, in, in his grace Amen Pastor Mayor, will lead us into prayer.